Greetings, fellow aliens. It's been a while, but I'm back. This is the 14th episode of Earthlings 101. Today we will learn how Earthlings think. In the very first episode of my channel, I introduced you to a model of the earthling mind, composed of three entities, self, Nigella, and beast. This model comes from an earthling scientist, who lived a century ago, and whose theories are quite outdated. So, maybe you should forget about this. It may be a good way to describe how it feels to be an earthling, but as a description of how the brain works, it's actually nonsense. Today I'll introduce you to another model, it doesn't describe everything the earthling brain does, only how earthlings think. For earthlings have two distinct thinking systems. Many earthlings call them intuition and reason, gut feeling and logic, or, metaphorically, heart and head. Earthling scientists call them system 1 and system 2. I will call them, the guesser and the ponderer. If you are familiar with the classification of alien intelligence, you will know that intelligence is usually composed of one or more modules of types like ponderer, gambler, guesser, dogmatic, archivist, cook, or chaotic, to name just a few. They often come in pairs or triplets that complete each other. The gambler, for example, is good at evaluating probabilities, whereas the archivist relies on a genetically transmitted plethora of precedents. Throw in a little chaotic to stir things up, and you get a decent model for the Betelgeusean mind. In this terminology, an earthling mind is an emotion-driven guesser-ponderer pair. A typical example for ponderers is the mind of the Centauri. Those aliens decide everything based on ternary logic. Their decisions are reliable but slow, and they have trouble handling insufficient data. Centauri make excellent scientists, lawyers, and generals. However, you won't rely on them for flying an Aldebaranian racing saucer on overdrive through a black hole cluster. A. Cruxy, on the other hand, are typical guessers. Their decisions are sloppy and approximative but extremely fast. This makes them bad scientists and commanders, but excellent hunters, pilots, and soldiers. But don't expect them to perform well at mental tasks. A good example of the difference between both species is the Battle of Regulus, during the Second Gravity War. When the Centauri Command fleet encountered a pack of A. Cruxy and Dreadnoughts, those bulky ships were completely outmatched by the Centauri on a technological level. Their cast titanium hull plating was no match to the sophisticated Centauri antimatter torpedoes, and their weapons systems were centuries behind the Centauri shielding technology. However, while the Centauri were still calculating ballistics and approach vectors and optimizing their attack strategy, the Acruxy had already fired gazillions of primitive metal pellets into the rough direction of the Centauri fleet. The Centauri hadn't even yet put their shields up. The battle was over before it began. Nowadays, the two galactic nations are allied, and they often have ships with two pilots, one of each kind. In critical situations, the Acruxy provides a quick response, until the Centauri has come up with a solid attack plan. Why am I telling you this? Because the Earthling brain works the same way. They have two systems, the Guesser, for quick and sloppy responses, and the Ponderer, for slow but reasonable conclusions. The Guesser is the primary thinking system of Earthlings. It's what Earthlings call intuition or gut feeling. He constantly evaluates input data and provides quick but approximative interpretations. He is able to perform multiple tasks simultaneously without much effort. His job is to provide an approximative model of the world in real time, it doesn't have to be true, as long as it's consistent. Speed is important, to reduce reaction time, better a fast and sloppy guess, than an accurate but slow conclusion. One could call the guesser a machine to jump to conclusions. The guesser's main tool is not logic, but pattern recognition. As we've already seen in the episode about vision, the brain is a powerful pattern recognition machine. This is not limited to visual patterns. The ponderer, on the other hand, is what earthlings call reason or logic. Unlike the guesser who treats a plethora of data simultaneously, the ponderer can only think about one subject at a given time. He's a reasoning machine, based on binary earthling logic, yes or no. 
Whereas the guesser provides a consistent but often sloppy model of the world, the ponderer's job is to answer open questions and correct inaccuracies. But what's so great about pattern recognition? Take, for example, an experienced shepherd, his guesser has learned to recognize patterns in sheep behavior, so he notices when something is off, even if he is unable to determine what exactly. The guesser transmits this warning to the ponderer, who takes it into account when analyzing the situation. So, what earthlings call intuition is simply recognition, in particular pattern recognition. And the more pattern he sees, the better he becomes at recognizing them. In other words, the guesser learns with training. For example, when an earthling learns to drive a vehicle, the ponderer will do most of the work. But the more experience they get, the more the guesser will learn how to react to which situation, until he can drive mostly alone, while the ponderer thinks of something else. Experience is mainly training of pattern recognition. An experienced chess player will recognize patterns in the position of the pieces. An experienced hitman will have learned to recognize patterns in the behavior of his victims. And an experienced general recognizes patterns in enemy movement. But all of them may be taken by surprise when encountering unusual situations, without time to ponder about what's happening. Not all patterns are learned through experience though. Some are acquired from education, books, media and so on. But many if not most patterns are inherited from the earthlings ancestors and hardwired into their brain. For example, many earthlings have an inborn fear of anything that matches the pattern large predator, a disgust for anything that matches the pattern spider or snake, and an urge to protect anything that matches the pattern young animal. Those responses are called instincts. You can't always trust your instincts though, I invite my earthling viewers to guess which three of those animals kill the most people per year in Africa, rhinoceros, Nile crocodile, mosquito, hippo, elephant, zebra, lion, or giraffe. Write your answer in the comments below. I'll give you the solution at the end of the episode. Now, let's examine a bit further how the guesser operates. His job is to create a consistent model of the world in real time. When the model is inconsistent or takes too long, the earthling can't act at all. When it's inaccurate, he might do the wrong thing but at least he does something. He can always have the ponderer sorted out later. To be fast, the guesser uses a lot of shortcuts and heuristics. One of the tricks he uses is called stereotypes. The guesser has a ready to use database of stereotypical people, things, etc., which he can use as a base for his pattern match capacities. This makes judging people unreliable but lightning fast, which can be a matter of survival. Imagine an earthling some 1200 solar cycles ago, who sees a funny looking ship full of strange men arrive. His ponderer might be tempted to go up to the monastery library, open the etymology A by Isidore of Seville, and look under F like funny looking ship. But as most plans the ponderer proposes, this takes time. The guesser's approach would be to try to quickly match the strange men with one of his stereotypes, and to act accordingly. This might be the better survival strategy. This isn't a thing of the past. Even the most open-minded earthling today would probably change the sidewalk when a person comes his way who matches the stereotype serial killer. However, some earthlings tend to stick to this first guess despite incoming contradictory data. This is called prejudice. Arguably, the most important heuristic of the guesser is substitution, replacing a difficult question with an easier one. For example, the question how important is it to save the white rhinoceros is replaced by how angry am I about rhino poachers. Strategic Advice When you invade Earth, Earthlings are likely to substitute the question can we win against those aliens with the question do those aliens look scary. So you might try to demoralize Earthlings with fearsome monsters. However, don't try this in countries that are used to invaders, those people are not afraid of anything. A subtype of substitution is the affect heuristic, it means that you use the simple question do I like earthling x to substitute more difficult questions like Should I invite earthling x for dinner? Would I create a business with earthling x? Would I travel the world with earthling x? Would I buy a used car from earthling x? Would earthling x be a good president? Should my offspring exchange bodily fluids with earthling x? Did Earthling X not murder Colonel Mustard with the lead pipe in the library? All those are very complex questions. The question do I like X is so much easier to answer. If you are unfamiliar with the Earthling concept of liking, allow me to explain. 
whenever an earthling meets another one, his guesser gives the other person tacitly some kind of score, let's call it like ability. A high score manifests as an emotion called affection, a low score as the opposite, antipathy. Likeability has seemingly no specific purpose. But why does it exist then? My guess is that likeability has developed for the very purpose of the affect heuristic, when an earthling encounters another earthling, he doesn't yet know if he will ever be asked to vote for him, to buy a car from him, to accept him as a son-in-law, or to judge his implication in a murder case. But to prepare for all those cases, the guesser creates an all-purpose score, the likeability, ready to be used, to substitute any question. The affect heuristic is not limited to earthlings, though, earthlings like or dislike places, objects, ideas, countries, events, and more generally all kinds of things. Let's consider a typical situation where the affect heuristic comes into play. An earthling realizes that his house is on fire, and that he has only time to save three objects or creatures. If he chooses three random things, he would save, say, a chair, a plant, and a bucket, not a very good choice. On the other hand, he hasn't the time to ponder. So the guesser kicks in and proposes the three things he likes the most, his grandma, his cat, and his video game console. That's much better, close enough to an optimal choice, which might be grandma, the priceless Van Gogh in her attic, and the crate of TNT in the basement. So, the affect heuristic isn't optimal, but it helps him to save speedily three of his most valuable things, which is better than a random choice. Provided he gets away with them before the TNT blows up the neighborhood. As mentioned before, the guesser's job is to create a consistent model of the world. The ponderer's job is to review and correct the guesser's model, in order to increase accuracy. He relies on concepts like things, true-false logic, causality and magical thinking, something we will talk about in another episode. How does the ponderer think? His reflections take the form of a continuous inner monologue called stream of consciousness, usually illustrated by a flow of imaginary images and sounds, very much like watching a YouTube video. Earthlings can quite literally create images in their head. This is called imagination. Some earthlings, however, will see this and think, well, we can't actually see things in our head, that would be silly. It's just a figure of speech. If you're an earthling thinking this, then I hate to break it to you, you can't? But most earthlings can literally see images in their head. You might have a condition called aphantasia. Look it up. Unlike the guesser, the ponderer consumes a lot of energy, both mentally and physically. Mentally because pondering is tiresome, and difficult when the earthling is tired. Physically because pondering consumes a lot of glucose, the brain is one of the most glucose-consuming parts of the earthling's body. By the way, burning glucose produces a lot of heat. To avoid overheating, earthlings have an emergency head cooling mechanism, they open wide their mouths and inhale. <sighs> this is called yawning. Scientific advice. Earthlings have figured out an experiment that is easy to reproduce, have earthlings choose between a healthy salad and a delicious cake. This is a typical guesser versus ponderer situation, the guesser usually prefers the cake but the ponderer votes for the salad. But when you occupy the ponderer with something else, like memorizing large numbers, the earthlings are far more likely to choose the cake. Most earthlings think the ponderer is the brain's protagonist, whereas it's actually rather a control instance. Earthlings could very well live with only a guesser, however, an earthling with only a ponderer wouldn't get very far. Most animals have no ponderer, only a more or less developed guesser which mainly runs on instincts. Actually, a mobile creature on Earth couldn't get very far without at least a primitive pattern recognition mechanism. Except for, the microbes. <laughs> As I said before, the ponderer's job is to correct the guesser's model of the world. However, sometimes he just endorses the guesser's sloppy hypotheses instead of correcting them. This is called rationalization. Once the guesser and the ponderer have agreed upon a consistent model, they tend to defend it at all costs, ignore evidence that contradicts the model and overemphasize evidence that confirms it. This is called confirmation bias. Another shortcoming of the guesser-ponderer system comes from the guesser's pattern detecting ability, sometimes, the guesser gets all pattern happy and detects patterns where is actually total randomness, and the ponderer believes him. For example, roughly 140 solar cycles ago, Earthling astronomers looking at the planet Mars were convinced they saw patterns of canals, although all there was to see were random landscape features. By the way, the fact that the Martian subway system was constructed roughly at the same time is surely a mere coincidence. I checked with Mars authorities, they confirmed that the building sites were camouflaged according to galactic regulations. 
Another example of false pattern detection is that of conspiracy theories. Earthlings dislike random patterns like for example random UFO sightings, and like models that make sense. So they connect the dots and invent a global conspiracy to explain everything. Tips for tourists. The safest places to land are rural areas with few inhabitants. Even if someone sees you, his testimony will sound like a crazy UFO conspiracy theory, so nobody will ever believe him. This episode is based on the book Thinking, Fast and Slow, written 11 solar cycles ago by Daniel Kahneman. It's an interesting book, even if some of the scientific evidence it is based upon has since proven to be way less solid than expected. Before I tell you the solution to the question with the African killer animals, a word from our sponsor, Orbital Solutions. Does your planet need augmentation? A space elevator system? An orbital defense array? An artificial planetary ring? A full-fledged interstellar hub station? Don't try to reinvent the sky hook, call in the professionals. We deliver state-of-the-art megastructures all over the galaxy. Call today, and we can start construction within two to three standard cycles. Orbital Solutions It's not a moon, it's a space station. Now, what are the deadliest animals in Africa? Number three is the elephant, with 500 kills per year. Number two is the hippo, with 3,000 kills. And the deadliest animal in Africa is the mosquito, which kills a million earthlings a year. This was the 14th episode of Earthlings 101. We have learned how earthlings think about the world around them. But that's only half of the job the brain does, it has to make decisions. It turns out that emotions play a key role in decision making. That's what the next episode will be about. I also owe you a third and final episode for the Knowledge series. I'm still doing research for this one, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, click on the little rocket, and don't forget to be alien.